Our study is about language acquisition. So we're looking at um, that very first step. So how infants are able to figure out what the words in their language are, as opposed necessarily to what those words mean. Um, so what we're doing is we've created an artificial language, and it's made up of four what we consider to be words, which uh, each have two syllables. And we're looking at a pattern called vowel harmony. And that means that within that language, within the words, the vowels have a shared property or characteristic. So when that property changes, and it's a vowel that doesn't fit, it must be a new word. And so what this is about um, is trying to see if it, that cue, vowel harmony, might be something that infants are looking for when they're trying to separate out words in their language. And we do the study with English acquiring infants. So English actually is not a language that has vowel harmony in it. So what's really cool about that is that when we see a difference that infants do pay more attention to what we consider to be words, which are those with vowel harmony, or part words which don't have the harmony, um, we're able to tell that this is something that could be innate, a tool that they, that all infants are born with across the world, since they've never actually been exposed to that pattern before. So that's kind of what our study is about here. We use something called the head term preference procedure, and what that means is that the infant is seated on their mother's lap, and we're able to see them in our monitoring room, and we're playing them sounds and showing them some flashing lights, and so after they're exposed to the familiarization stream where they hear that those patterns over and over again, we start playing them one word over and over, or a part word over and over. And it'll come out of one side of the speaker with a flashing light in that direction. So the infant will turn their head and kind of pay attention to it. And when they grow bored, they'll look away. They don't want to listen to it anymore. And that's kind of what we're measuring, which sounds they like to listen to more. It's more of a uh, measure of attention than anything else. Um, so especially at seven months, they do have a fairly short attention span, so they're only going to want to listen to things that they're interested in. So by measuring whether they pay more attention to either what we consider to be words or part words, we're able to tell that they make a distinction between the two. Um, so what we're looking at is that first step, which is how they are able to separate words when they listen to other people speak. Okay. How do they pick out what the words are as opposed to picking somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. or anything like that? Um, so if you think about listening to a foreign language, now, it's very hard to figure out what the words could possibly yeah, be, let exactly. alone what they mean. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what our experiment is looking at. And many things have been shown to be indicators within a language. That's actually what he was listening to. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> kind of weird like that. Um, things like stress, pausing, okay. intonation, things like that. The, the general research question that, that we're looking at is how infants initially start to figure out what the words of their language uh, are. And this is something that um, you and I take for granted speaking our, our native language. Uh, we know what word, when words are beginning and when words are ending. We don't even give it a second thought. Um, this is something that has been notoriously difficult to get computers to do. Uh, and um, you can sort of imagine why when you put yourself, or appreciate why when you put yourself in a situation of listening to someone speaking a foreign language that you've had no exposure to, it, first of all, it sounds like they're talking very quickly, and it sounds like they're, they're, they, you can't really tell where words begin and end. And that actually is a related phenomenon. It sounds like they're talking quickly because you're working so hard to try to do something that normally we do automatically. Um, and so, what we're trying, and so if you think about what uh, the situation of an infant is when they're learning their language, is they're basically listening to a foreign language. And they have to figure out where words begin and end, and they have to figure out what are very useful indicators in their language for beginnings and ends of words. So what this is, this is a nonsense language that we've made up. It's made of four two-syllable words, okay. what we call words, which have harmony. Okay. And so what he's listening to is 90 seconds of that stream over and over and over again. Okay. So it's kind of like his exposure to the language. Okay. And then what we're doing is we're playing him what we consider to be words, which are those two syllables, or part words, which he's heard equally as often, but it would be the second syllable and the first syllable of another word combined. Oh, okay. So they have a different okay. vowel. Like the end matching. and the beginning of one. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. So what we're doing is we're playing either one of those repeatedly or an actual word repeatedly. And we're okay. looking to see um, which, if he pays more attention to one or the other, okay. which would show that he had indicated one as a word and one as not oh, a word. It's not. Okay. Exactly. Um, and, and what's what, interesting... Sorry. sorry, go ahead. Oh, what's interesting is we use children who are acquiring English as a language okay. because English does not have vowel harmony, which oh, is kind of okay. cool. So even though numerous languages across the world do have vowel harmony, English doesn't. So these children have never been exposed to it before. Mm. And yet, they're still able to make that distinction. In our experiments in the past, very we cool. have actually noticed that they do make a distinction between the two different kinds of words. That's very interesting. Yeah, so it could show that it could possibly be an innate feature that all children are born with to use right. as a tool when approaching their language. I like it. 
And what we've been finding is that even English learning infants at seven months of age will pick up on these um, patterns. And not only that, they'll use these patterns to make guesses about word boundaries in the way that we would predict if they were um, equipped to use these cues as a, as a word boundary cue. Uh, and so this is interesting simply because it shows yet another skill that infants have that could be useful for word segmentation. But it's also um, interesting in that they didn't have to learn, or they had no opportunity to learn, that for English this is going to be a useful cue. And in fact, it's not going to be a useful cue for English. Nonetheless, they have this, um, this uh, propensity. Um, and this actually is in line with a lot of other things we know about early infant speech perception. So there are a lot of sound distinctions that um, English doesn't make, OK? Um, and some that I couldn't even produce because I'm just not used to producing those set kinds of sounds. Um, but certain sounds that we as English speakers would hear as the same sound, as the same speech sound, say a K okay, or a D. Um, whereas uh, certain distinctions are made in other languages um, where those two sounds would be, would be distinct sound categories, like the, the, the distinction between a P and a D in English, okay? That clearly different, okay? Um, we as, a, as adult speak, speakers of, of English might not be able to perceive that contrast, but what's interesting is a seven-month-old infant would be able to perceive that contrast. And the idea is, well, they have to be able to perceive things that they might need to be able to distinguish if their language makes a certain contrast. So even though English and the language these seven-month-olds been, have been exposed to for since, since birth, um, and even a little in utero, um, even though that, that language doesn't make use of vowel harmony uh, or doesn't have harmony patterns that are associated with word boundaries, um, infants nonetheless seem to be able to uh, naturally use that information at least early on. And so future steps now are to look at, um, uh, one, one question is whether this ability changes over time, as does infants' ability to perceive um, the sounds of a language, they get tuned to the language they're learning. Is there a similar kind of tuning process for the sensitivity to harmony patterns? For example, if by 12 months infants have had no reason to believe that their language, um, uh, that they should pay attention to vowel harmony in their language, will they start to um, lose the, the sensitivity to these patterns. So that's one um, obvious uh, sort of next step is to see whether there's a developmental time course for this sensitivity and for the ability or, or for the, 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 the use of this pattern in segmenting speech. Um, but then related questions have to do with um, whether infants learning uh, different languages, languages that have harmony patterns, but that have different kinds of harmony patterns. How early do they start to notice what might be informative for learning their language? Um, what is the, the learning process? What is the developmental time course for tuning to the particular harmony patterns that a language has? Um, and that will require um, cross-linguistic work, um, looking at um, uh, infants learning natively learning languages that, that have different kinds of harmony patterns. But that's all, another obvious um, place that this, this research can go. And what it tells us more broadly is, I mean, it, in some sense it's sort of basic research about what infants are doing when they're acquire, acquiring a language. Um, and it can give us some, some clues as to what um, kinds of things we might need to look for when there are cases of uh, language delay. Now there are many um, kinds of things that could be interfering there. Um, uh, and this just gives us more information about what, what is happening during normal development, which could be informative in that.